Education will graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Secondary Education in English Language Arts. He was on the presence list and has been active in the Bellingham community as drama director at a local church and on the board of directors and the acting volunteer coordinator for a local recovery house. After graduation, he plans on pursuing a teaching career and eventually doing missionary work in, Indo in Indonesia, helping build schools and orphanages. His speech is titled, Catalysts of Change. He hopes to challenge every member of the audience and specifically the graduates to never lose the desire to change and improve one's life every day. Please welcome Joshua Smalley. Thank you, President Karen Morse. Graduates, families, friends, faculty, staff, and all honored guests. This is a memory that will not soon be forgotten. I am honored to be standing here among you as we celebrate and admire those who have demonstrated excellence, dedication, and a passion for education. Western Washington University's 2007 graduates. I stand proud, proud of a college that nurtures exemplary students. I'm proud of a college that focuses on excellence, creativity, and engaged learning. I'm proud of a college that embraces diversity and actively serves the community. I stand here especially proud of students who are risk takers, students who make a difference. Some might label us as merely idealists. I might call us effective realists. Clearly, it has been an amazing journey, the wave of continuous classes that seemed endless. Every quarter, another load of books, gallons of coffee, and print quotas certain to be exceeded. Yet there was something strangely addicting about living the college life. It was unique, wild at times, and challenging, but it was fun. After all, it is referred to as prolonged adolescence. I remember those long nights staring at the computer screen, hours buried in books, extra large pizzas, and myriads of music. I remember the adventure during winter of traversing the ice-glazed ground in Red Square trying to get to class. And I remember that course that was unlike any other, Professor McClanahan's Education 410 class, The Dynamics of Teaching. Typically, we would do various stretches prior to class speeches. The idea was to try to relax and to become comfortable in front of groups. Such a class is relevant, of course, for future teachers, but I remember those who would walk by and peer in through that small classroom window. The looks of bewilderment and inquisitive eyebrows were, were I can't even describe them. I mean, college students doing calisthenics in a 400 level class? And the professor leading the way, they were amazed. Also, I remember the times when we would, uh, when the college students would, uh, during fall quarter of this year, I remember when we were all together. It was finals week, the Monday of finals week. The computer lab was bloated with students desperate to tackle the papers. It was the last rush. Deadlines were looming over our heads. If you remember, Whatcom County had been experiencing inclement weather that week. Consequently, cutting through the course of frantic keystrokes, the power went out. There was complete silence for about one, two, almost three seconds, and then a communal moan of anguish and, oh no, unless previously saved, many Beautifully articulated sentences, captivating titles, and stellar research evaporated. <laughs> Something to laugh about now, but hardly funny at the time. However, this terrible event caused me to stop and think. There wasn't much else I could do in the complete darkness anyways. I wondered how different an impact this power outage 
would have had just 25 years ago. This we know. The newest technology now permeates the process of education. Things have obviously changed, and I would argue for the better. Regarding change, however, how often do we make change a priority? How often do we consider the effect it has on our lives? These questions remind me of a, of a hike I took in the North Cascades. At one point, I came alongside a river flowing swiftly and sparkling in the sun, fresh, pure, rapidly moving water. One portion of the river danced off to my right and became a small stream meandering into the distance. I followed its path until it emptied gracefully into a pond, a stagnant, algae-infested body of water. The lack of motion, save for that incoming trickle, provided an ideal rotting place. It was the lack of change, the lack of movement forward, that had created this toxic environment. That stream was once part of a larger flow of water, fresh and teeming with life. It got off course. It ceased its progression. Graduates, let's apply this to our lives this morning. The pressure around us here at Western Washington University evokes a passion for ceaseless learning, for progression. The challenge is to transfer that passion to the rest of our life, post-college, in our homes, in our communities, in our jobs. Continuous learning that strives for positive change. See, today we do not cease to be students. We simply add the responsibility of teacher to our lifelong position as students. So from here forward, let us be agents of change, teachers of change. Not so that we can simply say that we've changed, but an actual effort at change that seeks improvement. Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, and a strong advocate for freedom and reform, Nelson Mandela spoke of education and its relationship to change in this manner. He said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. We possess that weapon. We now have a prize education. Armed with this invaluable education, we are the potential definition of success. Therefore, the onus is on us to embrace lifelong learning and continual change. For me, this means asking myself every evening, what did I do to cause change around me today? And what do I plan to improve tomorrow? Essentially, we cannot let this day be the highlight of our lives. Obviously, we cannot falter in apathy or complacency. We must strive forward like that pure and brilliant river. The Greek philosopher Aristotle once summed up change in these few quintessential words. Change in all things is sweet. With this in mind, I want to give us a charge. My desire is that the following causes us to question ourselves, to objectively analyze ourselves, and determine whether or not we are making an impact in our spheres of influence. This is my charge. In every day, from this point forward, be catalysts of change. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Joseph. Dr. Lyra Bodensteiner, please come.